Hello everyone, my name is Matthias Del Campo. I'm here today to present the paper Architecture, Language, and AI, Language, Attentional Generative Adversarial Networks, and Architecture Design. This paper was co-written by Dr. Sandra Manninger, Alexandra Carlson, and myself uh, from the Taubman College of Architecture and Urban Planning and Michigan Robotics, respectively, of the University of Michigan. When Walter Gropius, at the beginning of his career, started to work in the Beta Baron's office, he kept a terrible secret. He could not draw. He struggled with this deficiency in the environment of the Baron's office but famously became proficient in dictating drawings to his collaborators, demonstrating the ability of language to describe the complex material and spatial relationships in an architectural project. Synonymously, Sol Levitt expanded the concept of description into an entire career dedicated to the efficacy of language as instructions and foreshadowing the emergence of programming and scripting as a mean of artistic and architectural this uh, expression. So what is the relationship of language to architecture? In order to describe our materials and methods, we will rely on the example of the proof of concept project 24 high school in Shenzhen. It was important for the authors to demonstrate the efficacy of their approach by implementing it into a demanding design process. The practice band was invited to participate in a competition for the realization of a large new high school with 110,000 square meters, providing space for around 3,000 students. The program included classrooms, multipurpose hall, laboratory building, fab lab, physical education building, dorms, canteens, and outdoor sporting grounds. The structural engineering was done by Bollinger Grohmann in Frankfurt, Germany. A project of this size demands for a considerate positioning within the urban texture. The site is located in the northwest outskirts of Shenzhen and is in close proximity to the sea. The wedge-shaped site has its highest point in the northwest corner, eight meters above sea level, and slopes from there towards the east. Generating images automatically based on natural language descriptions is a fundamental problem in many applications, such as in computer-aided design and art generation, and serves as a propellant in multimodal learning research and interface across vision and languages, as evidenced by the increased research activities in this area of inquiry. Attentional generative adversarial networks, in short, attention guns, allow attention-driven multi-stage refinement for fine-grained text-to-image generation. Attention in neural networks imitates the way that humans are able to concentrate on particular aspects of their sensory input and blend out the rest around them. The architecture of the attention GAN consists of two components. Component one is an attentional generative network, which contains an attention mechanism that draws different subregions of the image. The focus is on words that are most relevant to the subregion behind drawn. The generative network uses initially a global sentence vector to generate a low resolution image. Subsequently, it uses the image vector in each subregion to query word vectors by using an attention layer to form a word context vector. The regional image vector is then combined with the corresponding word context vector to form a multimodal context vector. This forms the basis on which the model generates new image features in the surrounding subregions, which results in higher resolution pictures with more details at each stage. Mm -hmm. Component two in the attention gun is a deep attentional multimodal similarity model. Deep attention multimodal similarity model, in short DAMSM, using both the global sentence level information and the fine grained word level information, the DMSMM can compute the similarity between the generated image and the sentence. Therefore, an additional fine grade image text matching loss for training the generator is provided by the DAMSM. Co-author Alexander Carlson translated the attention GAN algorithm to operate with the COCO database. In addition, the algorithm was adapted to work on the cloud computing solution paper space in order to be able to crunch the large amount of data with powerful GPU machines. 
The sentences used with the attentional GAN algorithm were a combination of sentences derived from the program of the building and descriptions of the activities in these buildings. For example, the multipurpose hall was designed using the sentence, it can be used as a theater to hold lectures and events. I repeat the sentence used to create the multipurpose hall was, it can be used as a theater to hold lectures and events. In a synonymous method, we applied this idea to every single building complex within the high school project. Providing for a consistent architectural language within the entire project will simultaneously providing a, low, a, a small scale differentiation of buildings that allows for a human scale in the design. Despite the fact that it's such a large project, the idea of creating rather a town than a block was the idea. Uh, it's more, uh, more relevant as being um, um, a small settlement on a hill, for example, than a large scale monolithic building. The use of attentional GAN as architectural design technique is in its nation state. Thus, it is difficult to position this project within a particular set of projects. Rare examples of computationally savvy architects testing the waters of attention GAN exist, such as the work of Milos Ilic. Much more common than the use in architecture is the application of attention GAN in the arts and in fashion. Though they describe them as common the description of common might be quite a stretch, generally speaking. More successful would be an approach to contextualize the work along the lines of the use of language as a design environment. As a placeholder for a larger discussion on language and architecture, the authors will only mention Christopher Alexander, who is to this day notoriously unpopular with architects. which launches us directly back to the discussion on semiotics in the introduction to this paper. Why is semiotics of interest when discussing design methods based on artificial neural networks? For the record, attention GANs belong to the family of artificial neural networks, exactly because semiotics can be considered a prime example of a theory of the artificial and thus occupies a central position in understanding phenomena of design. The differentiation between the analytic and the synthetic is akin to the liaison between design and semiotics. Thus, semiotics strives to talk about the environmental element of design, which is so essential to narratives of architecture design based on symbolic cultures, signs, scripts, code, signifier, etc. These conversations ultimately have to turn towards aesthetics in order to conduct a survey of emerging milieus. In the frame of the conversation within this paper, aesthetics is connotated with the parallel mapping of environment, the articulation of the environment, and the alternative nature of any design process, leading to the assumption that within neural architecture, design and aesthetics take the same position and value. In conclusion, this also means that science can be artificial, or rather that science can be considered theories of constructed meaning, which includes design. There's a long history of the relationship of semiotics and design, not only in design methodologies, but also in its pedagogy. This is, for example, evidence in the way that Max Bill conducted his studios at Ulm. The pedagogical alternatives to the Beaux-Arts methodologies established in France and Italy post-1969, the long-standing enamoration of Umberto Eco with architecture and urbanism, just to name a couple of examples. Roland Barth interrogates fashion, Anne Bayer Geislin's research on semiotics, design and aesthetics, and so on and so forth. The common denominator for a design theory gravitating around ideas emerging from semiotics is the search for a language of design. The results of the approach presented in this paper can be positioned exactly along this line of thinking. The search for a language of design based on the artificial creation of signs and signifiers. The major finding of this paper is, apart from the creation of a theoretical basis for the application of language in a neural network driven design method, the proof of concept that this approach can produce viable architectural designs. The presented method still needs major work. For example, 
The design method primarily creates either exteriors or interiors, but not both uh, at the same time, interdependently. Steps such as the initial massing modeling, the exact nature of the plans and details of the 3D models are introduced in a top-down method. It would be of interest to explore it further in further research, the possibility to automatize more of the process in order to interrogate the emergent properties of the artificial creation of signs. As stated above, semiotics is a perfectly fitting thinking school in regards to its considerations of the artificial. We started the paper with the story of Walter Gropius and his terrible secret, the inability to sketch anything. He overcame this problem by describing his ideas in a lingual fashion to others around him who converted this language into images. We presented in this paper a possibility to convert this terrible secret into a design weapon, one that oscillates between the interrogation of language, inquiries, aspects of the artificial and its role in contemporary design culture. One that creates images somewhere between abstraction and surreal, full of instances of estrangement and defamiliarization in an architecture that can be described as something different, alien, strange, and wonderfully beautiful. Maybe the first genuine 21st century architecture. Thank you. <laughs>